All right, welcome back to Low Carb Frustrations. Now, this next frustration we're going to talk about sabotages so many people that have the best intentions when they start a low carb diet, and that is intense, sometimes overwhelming cravings for the carbohydrate comfort foods you see on the left or for the hardcore sugary sweets you see on the right. So whether it's the carbohydrate comfort foods of bread, bagels, pasta, potatoes, potato chips, corn chips, or the sugary sweets of soda, candy, desserts, donuts, both those categories of foods will completely block fat burning. And so often, these really strong cravings for those foods are much more complex than just a simple matter of willpower and saying no. So there are a lot of people that want to do a low-carb diet. They know they'll burn fat if they can stay on it. But this picture does a great job of showing why sugar and carbohydrates literally can be addicting. This is from the website weightlossninja.org. Great website if you have a chance to check it out. So let's go step-by-step step through this addiction cycle for sugar and carbohydrates. The first thing that happens after you eat a lot of sugar and carbs is you get a big spike of blood sugar and insulin. That's what makes you gain weight. But you also get a big surge of dopamine. Dopamine is a powerful feel-good neurotransmitter that's associated with pleasure in the brain. Dopamine is also the neurotransmitter that's released with drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. So most addictions are tied in with the surge of dopamine. Sugar and carbohydrates can also increase the neurotransmitter serotonin. Serotonin has calming and antidepressant effects. So if you're stressed, anxious, or depressed, you're probably going to gravitate more towards sugar and carbohydrates because when you eat those foods for a short period of time, you will feel better. So sugar and carbs don't just taste good, they feel good. But remember that eating sugar also creates a big spike of insulin and one of the major jobs of insulin is to lower blood sugar. So on number three on this cycle, you see that within a few hours after eating those cookies and all the good chemical feelings they produced, your blood sugar levels can fall rapidly. And that brings us to number four in the cycle. When your blood sugar drops too low from all that excess insulin, you're going to get really hungry. But you're probably also going to get irritable, anxious, sad, or just tired because those are the major side effects of low blood sugar. So guess what food your brain is immediately going to crave so that you can get your blood sugar back up and also increase those feel-good chemicals again? You guessed it. You're going to crave more sugar. So you eat some more cookies. You get that blood sugar and dopamine spike. You feel better for a while, your blood sugar drops later, and then the cycle just keeps repeating over and over again. This is why it can be so hard to get off of sugar and carbs, even if you have the best intentions to do it. It's a powerful addiction. So let's talk about the most powerful strategies to help you break this vicious cycle. So this first strategy might sound kind of simplistic, but it really is an essential part of beating cravings. And that is just avoidance of junk carbs and sugar. Because as we saw from the last slide, the more you eat, the more you crave, and the surge of insulin that's produced from eating those foods is just going to keep you hungry. But it's not enough to avoid junk carbs and sugar. You have to replace those foods with foods that actually satisfy hunger and fight cravings. And that means you're going to need to eat more protein and more fat. And this is why so many people struggle and actually fail on diets. Most people already know that they need to cut sweets in order to lose weight. But most people have also been falsely taught that you have to go on a very low calorie, low fat diet to lose weight. So they try to live completely on things like salads, celery sticks, fruit. And that works for a day or two. Because if you starve yourself of essential protein and fat, it's inevitable that you're constantly going to be fighting hunger and cravings. So those very low calorie, low fat diets, they typically end pretty quickly with either a pizza binge or a carton of haagen ice cream. So if you want to conquer your sugar and carbohydrate cravings and you really want to feel satisfied on a low-carb fat-burning diet, these are the proteins and fats you really want to be eating throughout the day. On the top row, you see some really great proteins to make up the foundation of your meals. Eggs are always going to be the best breakfast for fighting sugar and carb cravings throughout the day. Foods like chicken, meat, you could add fish to this for your lunch and dinner foundation. These foods give you long-lasting energy and stable blood sugar. 
And the more stable you can keep your blood sugar, the less you crave sugar. That's such an important concept to remember. On the second row, you see a whey protein shake. Whey protein is a great option when you don't have the appetite or the time for a substantial protein meal with those foods you see on the top row. Whey protein is a great, light, easy to use protein that gives you a lot of flexibility on a low carb diet. Hopefully we'll have a whole separate video on whey protein soon. And speaking of fats, on the bottom row you see superstar fats for fighting cravings and feeling satisfied on a low carb diet. Foods like coconut oil, butter, avocados. These are the fats your brain loves to be fed with because they provide such concentrated energy. And no, you will not get fat by eating these foods. These are your best friends when you're trying to burn fat. So take a good look at these foods. If you don't want to feel tortured and deprived when you're trying to get off sugar and carbs, these are the kind of foods you need to be eating. And when you're first starting out on a low carb diet, you really need to snack about every three to four hours. Because if you go much longer than that, you're probably going to get low blood sugar. And if you get low blood sugar, it's going to be really hard to say no to those strong sugar and carb cravings. Now, when you go on any of these low carb plans, it's going to be normal for the first week or two to have some carbohydrate withdrawal symptoms, and that includes cravings. But if you're eating fat and protein regularly, those cravings and withdrawal symptoms should subside pretty soon. But if the cravings seem overwhelming or they just never go away, then you probably have a nutritional or chemical imbalance that's keeping you from beating the addiction. And this is where nutritional supplements can really be helpful in minimizing cravings for both carbs and sugar. This is definitely my favorite combination of supplements to help patients with really strong, really stubborn sugar cravings. And it's usually only needed for the first two weeks on a low-carb diet during that tough transition of carbohydrate withdrawal. So we'll just go through these quickly. Cataplex GTF is a source of chromium and B vitamins, two very important and very commonly deficient nutrients for helping keep blood sugar stable and minimizing sugar cravings. Inositol is a nutrient that supports serotonin balance, and we saw earlier that a serotonin imbalance can really aggravate a sugar addiction. So if you notice that you crave sugar more when you're stressed or feeling down, inositol can be really helpful to support the underlying serotonin imbalance. Beta food is a concentrated extract of beet juice to support the liver and the gallbladder, and gymnema is probably the most popular herb used across the world to help curb sugar cravings and to promote blood sugar stability. So not everybody needs to do supplements like these to conquer cravings. Most of the people I see will have their cravings disappear after a few weeks on a low-carb diet. But if you've tried repeatedly to cut the bread and the sugar out of your diet, but stubborn cravings just keep sabotaging you, this two-week program might be a great fit for you. Uh, it's really helped a lot of my patients conquer some pretty tough cravings. But ask your healthcare professional what they recommend for your sugar cravings because everybody's different and you might respond more effectively to something else. Okay, so we've conquered cravings, and that's huge for success in a low-carb diet. But what about this frustration? Boredom. A lot of people drop out of low-carb diets and go back to carbs because they start thinking that it's nothing but eggs and meat, and that's the only thing that they can have. And 20 years ago, you might have had an excuse to be bored on a low-carb diet, but today there are so many helpful books, websites, resources that give you easy, flavorful recipes and foods that you probably didn't even know that you could eat on a low-carb diet. Even recipes for low-carb desserts, like you see a picture of a low-carb cheesecake on Dana Carpenter's 500 Low-Carb Recipes. She's got a great companion book to that, 15-Minute Low-Carb Recipes. I really like this blog that's listed here, livinglevitolowcarb.com. So there's just so much out there. There's no reason to ever be bored today when you're following a good low-carb diet. So this last low-carb frustration is something that comes up a lot, and that's the frustration that low-carb foods are often more expensive to purchase than sugar and carbohydrate foods. So when you're looking at breakfast options, you're going to notice that carbohydrate-filled cereals are going to cost less than eggs. And for cooking oils, processed refined vegetable oils that are very unhealthy are going to cost less than really healthy cooking oils like coconut oil and butter. And for dinner options, foods like pasta are going to cost less than good meat and vegetables. So it's very easy to think that you're going to save lots of money by eating a high-carbohydrate processed diet. But here's what you don't see right away with that grocery store price tag. As we saw earlier, the more sugar and carbs you eat, 
the more you want and the more hungry you stay throughout the day. So yes, even though fat and protein is more expensive, it's also more satisfying. So if you eat eggs cooked in butter for breakfast, you're not as likely to have to buy that soda later on in the day. So the price between a low carb and a high carb diet really tends to level out for most people over time. But let's say you save a lot of money right now by eating cheaper carbohydrate and sugar filled foods instead of real food. Do you have any idea how much money you may spend on your health later? This is just a short list of the diseases that are strongly linked to a high sugar and a high carbohydrate diet. And they're all pretty expensive. 50% of Americans are expected to be diabetic by the year 2020. That's half of us. And it's because we're eating an insane amount of grain carbohydrate and sugar filled foods. And being diabetic has been found to be a major factor in developing heart disease, dementia and Alzheimer's disease, and inflammatory disease like arthritis. So if you're living off of cheap carbohydrates, you're not saving money in the long run. So a quick recap of low-carb frustrations, if you're having slow results, remember that the maximum amount of fat that you can burn per week is one to two pounds. As long as you're seeing any changes, whether it's on the scale, waist measurements, how your clothes are fitting, the program is working. Stick with it and you will get to your destination. If you're not getting any results, that's a different story and that's a problem. You need to get with somebody that can help you find and correct your weight loss roadblock. Is it a sluggish thyroid keeping you from burning fat? Excessive stress hormones? Liver dysfunction? Sleeping problems? If you can find and correct whatever your weight loss roadblock is, you will get rewarded on a low-carb diet. If you're not getting any results on a low-carb diet, that's a different story and that's a problem. You need to get with somebody that can help you identify and correct whatever that roadblock is. Is it a sluggish thyroid keeping you from burning fat? Is it excessive stress hormones? liver dysfunction, sleeping problems, if you can find and correct whatever your weight loss roadblock is, you can get rewarded on a low carb diet. If you're craving sugar and carbohydrates, remember you need to snack frequently with protein and fat. And if they're really strong cravings, you might need supplements for a while to break the addiction. If you're bored on a low carb diet, take advantage of the ideas, the creativity that you can learn with the low carb cookbooks and the online resources that are available today. And if you're frustrated that real food costs more than fake junk food, remember you have the choice of investing some extra money to maintain your health now, where you can spend a lot of extra money when you lose your health later. And we're not talking about never being able to enjoy good ice cream or pizza or pasta or chocolate. Those things are part of life. And when you have them, you need to enjoy them guilt-free. But carbs and sugar can't be the majority of your diet without really big health consequences down the road. So besides being the most effective way to burn fat and maintain weight loss, cutting all this extra sugar and carbohydrate from your diet really is one of the most profound investments that you can make in your long-term health. You can do this and you need to go for it. God bless you.